You know, I was in my car the other day, and actually it was a couple of weeks ago, and right when I started it, this little light came on, and it said, maintenance required soon. Okay, I was aware of that, but it was nice that the car also reminded me. A couple of weeks went by, maybe another couple hundred miles, and this other light came on and said, maintenance required, and that stayed there the whole time until I went to the shop and had it serviced. Now, that little example made me think of how important it is to be in touch with ourselves, and I wrote a blog post about Know Thyself. I think it was November 14th, 09. And I'm going to bring it into another light now with practicing, maintenance routines, warming up, how important I feel those are, especially as one goes on with a career or as one starts to get older, no matter what they're doing in their playing, to keep in touch with the fundamentals of playing is very important grounding so things can continue on as, you know, at a level that you can feel satisfied with for the most part. Um, I feel that oftentimes players come into trouble when they don't take some of the maintenance and warming up seriously. What I mean, what I mean by seriously is paying attention to when they're playing about how it feels. Do they notice a change that is not very beneficial? And do they know their physiology well enough to say, right, here's what you need. You need 10 minutes a day now on the mouthpiece doing this, this, and this. Or you need to do this, this, and this more on the horn. Or you say to yourself, oh, right, I haven't been practicing in the high range much for a month. How? Oh. Okay, well, I'm going to start adding that in because I know that'll give my embouchure more efficiency if I do it thoughtfully. It'll give that ring in my sound that I'm missing. And it'll help my endurance. And good high-range practice will do that. Wrong high-range practice, and what I mean by wrong, and I will say again, and you've heard me say many times on these videos, that it's a very individual matter. But if you do things like practice in the high-range for an hour, loud, and wonder why your lip doesn't feel good, <laughs> you might want to modify the amount of time you're playing up there, and the volume. To experiment with the different territories. Okay? Um, playing unbelievably loud in the middle range, I know, does not help my playing anymore. At one time, that seemed like the right thing to do. But it's not now. There's a lot of things that start to get lost when I do that. For extended periods of time, very, very loud. So, how well do we know what we need? Do we know our symptoms well enough to say, you need this, you need that? And this comes from constant practice, constant experimenting, and a basic sense of being in touch. I say this because I remember I was going to play some duets with some players and with this particular player, and this has happened many times. They just pull the instrument out of the case and they can start playing great. And I say, well, that's great. You're going to have to give me an hour because I haven't played today yet. Because I have to make the read. I have to make this. Yes, I can pick it up and play without warming up, but I don't like to. And... I don't find a source of manhood 
or vanity by saying, I don't need to warm up. I'm strong enough, I don't have to. Great, if you don't have to. I realize my playing is much better if I do. And it also is smart because there's less wear and tear. Now, for example, I know that if my lip feels kind of squishy, that playing staccato firms up the embouchure, makes it have better immediacy and efficiency, and causes an overall honing in of the core of my sound. staccato sometimes, that was at about a mezzo piano dynamic. Um, sometimes louder works well, and sometimes even softer. And I'll do an exercise like this in maybe all seven positions. Notice that when I had to breathe, I took it through my nose. And that was so I could maintain the embouchure formation, especially in the corners and the placement, so I could get used to playing with my embouchure, not having to make constant adjustments. And some people do that kind of exercise. They go... They're, they're almost embouchure articulating where I find it's more efficient if we can make less movement, if possible. Um, I also know that sometimes playing just isolated, crisp notes at a louder volume can also help add some, what I would call protein to the embouchure. Um, there's certain things that firm things. There's certain things that broaden and loosen things. Um, sometimes a lot of legato playing for me actually loosens the embouchure a bit, and if I'm feeling loose already, then it do, it's not useful. And now someone might be the complete opposite. And if that's the case, then you got to know that about yourself. If I'm feeling tight, I might do things like that, or I might do things like this. And do a series of glisses. In fact, I warm up that way. Um, the right kind of high range can also add strength and firmness to your embouchure. <laughs> could keep going higher, but I started to feel at that F sharp, maybe not. <laughs> and then once I'd work up to it a little bit more, I'd probably take that up to, to the B flat. Um, but I could feel from the nature of it that it wasn't sitting in its place enough. And so I would go back and do a series of other types of exercises, perhaps even a combination of different tongue scale patterns or slurring and tucking. For example, All sorts of things you could do to try to crisp it up. Sometimes loud things can help as well. And so the most important thing, I guess, about our time together right now is really ask yourself, do you know what kind of playing has what result to your embouchure?